Hey, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Sorry, uh, we didn't have class yesterday, uh, uh, but let's uh, pick up from where we stopped. Uh, before we begin, let's uh, start with a word of prayer, please. Uh, Say, would you mind leading us in prayer? Yes, Pastor. Thanks, thank you. Our Father in heaven, we bless you and adore you. Thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to be taught and instructed. We thank you, Lord, for all you've been doing, Lord, since the beginning of this semester. How our lives have been transformed, Lord, by all the teachings through your son, Pastor Paul. And we thank you, Lord, for yet another moment for wisdom to be impacted in our lives. Lord, to be better stewards of the gifts and the opportunities you've given us to be effective representatives in the marketplace and all that, Lord, you've called us to be and to do in our time here on earth. We commit this class to your hands and we say that the Spirit of God will take control and that the Spirit of revelation and understanding will be made available for each and every one of us and Lord, we pray this time shall be a blessing to each and every one of us. Guide, O oh God, the utterance of your, your Son and use him greatly to impact upon us wisdom. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Say, for leading us in prayer. All right. Uh, so last week we began with uh, chapter 19. Uh, work-life balance and we looked at why it is so important to balance professional life and personal life uh, and we looked at practical rep recommendations practical things uh, that the scripture teaches us on uh, you know maintaining a work-life balance now i also gave a lot of examples on how you know people have been extremely successful in their business uh, but they have failed in the area of looking after their families or the other way around too, where people have been extremely uh, good in, you know, looking after their family, but they haven't been able to do any work and provide for their family. Right. Uh, and when you look at it in, in ministry, uh, many leaders who have been extremely successful, the Lord has really uh, anointed them, anointed their ministry. They've done wonderfully exceptionally well in their ministry it has grown ministries have the ministry has you know uh, expanded to different nations become international yet uh, you know maybe their children uh, have have the sense of okay i didn't have my father with me uh, for the small things in my life growing up and and so here's why it is very important uh, that we must have a good work-life balance. It's important to work. It's important to also make sure that we are there for our family. And so we looked at a few things, maintaining a rhythm of work, worship, and rest, uh, being committed to what is important. Uh, there will be times when there's additional work. Uh, work is, you know, uh, it's just that season where, okay, we have to work hard continually. Uh, and, and then there are seasons when you we can take rest, stay back, be with the family, spend time with family. Uh, now, all of this can be done when we know what is important to us. If we feel that, you know, we looked at this point also last week, where if we feel that only growing up the ladder professionally is important, then we're going to only focus on that and we will end up not being there for our family. Right. Uh, so we must understand what is we must have a value scale. What, what is of true value, right? You know, money can't buy happiness. Money cannot buy resources. Money cannot buy peace. Money cannot buy rest. But we must have a value scale. We must understand, okay, uh, making money, yes, it's part of it. Growing up the ladder in the business, yes, that's part of life. But there are certain intangibles, right, where uh, we may never get back building a relationship with your children, building a relationship with your spouse, your extended family. You now, I always tell myself, my, my children are young now, so I must give more time to them. Because there'll come a time when, you know, they're 18, 20 years old. They don't want us. I mean, meaning they don't want to always be with us and always, you know, uh, ask us questions very rarely right they they have their own they will have their own set of friends they will have their own 
uh, visions and plans ahead of them. Uh, and so it is very important that uh, we impact our children at a young age, even, even those who are, uh, you know, that is why we put emphasis on children's church, where right? it's so important uh, to, you know, impact our children. And then we also looked at uh, keeping important things important, which means, uh, yes, family and work life, the balance is something that we need to, you know, really uh, uh, decipher, which means we have to understand, okay, this time must go to the family, this time should go to work. Uh, but these, there are going to be some tough choices to make along the way, right? Uh, but we must keep things important as important, right? Uh, if, if something is important to our children or to our parents, and if we are able to do it, but we choose to do something else uh, uh, in place of that, then, you know, we're losing focus, right? Uh, family time is important. Keep short accounts, checks and balances, uh, meaning uh, check, check how our life is. Remember what Jesus said, um, you know, he sent the disciples, he said, go out, do your ministry and come back. And they came back and they were very tired. And I, I'm sure Jesus noticed that. And he said to them, okay, let's stop everything. Let's go away alone. Let's get some rest. Uh, no ministry for some time. So let's get some rest. So uh, it's very important to keep checks and balances, right? And then we stopped at this point, guard your resources, just your time, energy, and your money. And we looked at something called as energy leaks, right? Um, when we don't mind our own business, it becomes an energy leak. When we get involved in things we shouldn't be involved in, these are all energy leaks, overreacting to situations, social media distractions. Uh, now, I'm not saying that we must not use social media. We can use, but the moment it becomes something which takes too much of your time and energy, uh, then we need to make sure that, you know, we can cut down on it, right? Because many times social media can really, uh, you know, take us away. Uh, and not only social media, gaming and, uh, you know, YouTube, all of these things can uh, become energy leaks in our life, right? And takes up our time, takes up our resources. And then all of a sudden we feel, hey, how did this whole year go? And I was just, you know, I had planned so much, but the whole year is gone. I hardly could do whatever I had planned. So important is to stay focused, stay at, in the center of God's plan for your life, right? And uh, and so uh, we will look at uh, how we can be efficient also. Let's look at the next point. Uh, so I'm on chapter 19, work-life balance. And this is the point on develop personal efficiency, productivity, and time-saving skills. So if you're tracking along on your notes, I'm on that point. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 16 and 18, it says, wisdom is better than strength. And verse 18 says, wisdom is better than weapons of war. Right? Now, wisdom is something that we all desire, right? Uh, uh, knowledge is something that we attain, but we need wisdom. The wisdom of God enables us to work efficiently, to maximize our output. Right. Uh, sometimes we, I don't know if this has happened to you, but it's happened to me where it's a simple task. It takes probably about half an hour, but just because of, you know, uh, uh, distractions or things around that half an hour task takes one and a half hours. I remember this one time uh, we had to update our, an Excel sheet with, uh, you know, uh, uh, the names and numbers of a few of our church members. So probably about 30 of them in that list. It hardly, it should hardly take about 30 minutes, not, nothing, nothing more than that. Uh, but I remember, you know, that, that one time I was doing it and it was past two hours. And I thought to myself, why am I taking so long to finish an Excel sheet with name, number, email address for 30 people? And I realized that the way I was getting about doing it was completely wrong. My mind was thinking about something else. And I, I, was, I was planning about 
a task which I was, you know, I was doing a certain task, but I was planning about another task. Uh, you know, sometimes these menial tasks can take up all our time. So it's very important to understand that, okay, this is a task which I need to complete uh, and the output, I should be productive, efficient in what I'm doing. What is what, what takes 20 minutes or half an hour, let me complete it in half an hour. Right. And then we can also use technology tools to improve our productivity and efficiency. Right. To do lists is something that we can do. So every time I switch on my laptop, uh, I get the notifications. Right. So these are the to do lists. Right. So that could be, you know, birthday wishes for church family uh, uh, or anniversary wishes or, OK, there's this task that has to be done on Tuesday by 5 p.m. So everything comes up. Uh, so I have this to-do list. Uh, sometimes I have it on my phone as well. So uh, I, I just have that list. I know, okay, these are the things that I have that has to be done. And software, you know, technology helps us. Right? It helps us to, you know, get things done in a quicker way, in a more efficient way, right? Uh, then here's a very important thing: learn to delegate even when you feel like doing it yourself. Now, if you're in a place of authority or a leadership role, uh, learn to delegate. Right now, especially in ministry, uh, you know, there will be times when you've done, we've been doing, you know, leading a small group or a church for many years. And we're comfort, comfortable doing that, right? Uh, comfortable with the Bible study, comfortable with, you know, praying for people uh, and for the life groups and comfortable doing everything because that's where, uh, you know, that's what we like to do. But there are times when we as leaders must learn to delegate. Why? Because it also gives, firstly, you are, you know, you know, you know that, okay, uh, I can do something else during this task. Secondly, you're giving an opportunity for somebody else to grow in their gifts and calling, right? So if you feel that, okay, life group is happening or small group, you don't have to go every week. Learn to delegate, right? Say, okay, why don't you go and look after the, uh, share the word, right? Also, you know, when you learn, when, when, when it comes to delegating, we need to also keep certain things in mind, like have they been faithful? Have they been growing the Lord? Uh, and all of these things, but learn to delegate. I, and when we do that, really, it uh, uh, you know you're you're raising up other leaders, uh, and that's wonderful because the, you know Paul himself says, uh, and when we look at the life and the ministry of Apostle Paul, uh, he raised up so many leaders, and that's what we want to do, right? Uh, give opportunities to others, set deadlines for your tasks right uh, now when we don't set deadlines what happens is we are working in the air meaning we don't know okay this task is something that takes two days but it's been five days it's been seven days it's been 10 days and there is no deadline so we just take it easy right uh, so that's not how it should be we need to set short deadlines uh, it could be some menial task at home as well, right? So for those who are not working, uh, who are at home or, uh, and, you know, set menial tasks. Uh, you tell yourself, okay, by one o'clock, uh, you know, I need to complete this. And by five o'clock, I need to do this. And then when I'm able to do it, you know, you will realize that you're being very, very effective. Right. You're, you're, suddenly you have a lot of time in your hands. You can spend that additional time in the word or listening to worship songs, listening to sermons, building yourself up in the Lord. Right now, why, why deadlines are important is because many times we can lose focus when we don't have deadlines. Right. Uh, so one of the things that we at APC, all of us do is, you know, whenever there are tasks assigned and we know that we have to do it, uh, we always give a due date, always, right? Uh, there's a due date, okay, by this date, uh, you know, the things has to be done. That's the reason we have a due date for our assessments, right? Uh, there's a due date. So you know, okay, this is the due date and I need to complete this task before the due date. 
right? And it's not that we as teachers are giving you the due date and you have to do it. No, we ourselves do it, right? As uh, you know, when we were preparing content for uh, material for the courses, uh, you know, uh, uh, the last last semester I was preparing for John, uh, the book of John and John 1, 2, and 3, John. So that's, I knew, okay, the content is lots, right? The whole of John, 1, 2, and 3, John. And, and, and so the content is more. So I said, okay, how am I going to complete the notes using these commentaries? And, you know, how am I going to make sure that I get the right output from all these commentaries, compile them together, make sure that they're good, uh, and make sure that I don't overwrite or don't underwrite, uh, but just so that it's enough and it's it, it touches the main points of the entire book. So uh, setting deadlines, what I did was, okay, John, the book of John, I must complete it in 15 days. So I knew, okay, 15 days is my target. So uh, whether it was day or night, didn't matter. I knew, okay, 15 days. So I had that date in my mind. Okay, now it's eight days. Okay, 10 days are up. I have another five days. I need to make sure I complete it. So that way, <clears throat> sorry, that day, I that way I know that I'm being effective. I know that, okay, my work. Uh, now, here's another important thing. Just because I have a due date, we don't just do something and, you know, uh, okay, I have to submit this. So I just do some uh, half-hearted work and just submit it. No. We do our best, um, keeping in mind, you know, these due dates. Now, set realistic, uh, you know, deadlines. Don't have a deadline where you say, okay, uh, it's a task which takes 15 days. Don't say, I'll finish it in eight days. Right? Uh, now, what's going to happen is, for it, one, we may not finish it in eight days. So that's an unrealistic uh, deadline. Two, uh, just because it's eight days, we may do a half-hearted work and just complete it. But at the end of the day, the whole thing is going to come back at us, right? So set good deadlines, short deadlines, uh, and appropriate deadlines for your tasks, and then you will see that you will be so effective. Now, I'm not saying that I, you know, these are things that I always used to do, but after you know uh, trying these, uh, you know, uh, these points that I'm that I'm sharing, after applying it in my own life, I realized that hey, we can be so much more effective and efficient in our work, right? So uh, there'll be times you can reuse content, update it, modify it rather than starting from scratch. Now, for example, there will be times when we will be asked to update our notes, right? Our Bible college notes or things that we are uh, teaching in colleges. So we just see what we have and we build on that, right? Next point is to regenerate yourself, right? Now, here's very important. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Yes, could one of us please read that? Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Let's go ahead, any one of us. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God does not come and go. God lasts. He creates of all you can see or imagine. He does not get tired, tired out, does not pause to catch his breath, and he knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired, give fresh strength to drop out, drop out. For even you people tired and drop out, young folk in their prime stumble and fall. But those who wait upon the Lord get fresh strength. They, they, spread, they spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Avinas. Now, this is a very common verse. You know, a lot of us uh, have it on our door, door frames and our walls. We have this thing. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This is the message translation, which is a little bit different. Uh, but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings like eagles. They will run 
and not be weary. They will walk and they will not faint. Our physical, our emotional, our spiritual strength, our energy must be renewed every moment. Right? Find out what renews yourself. Exercise. Is it worship? Is it rest? Uh, uh, what are the things that renew your mind? Uh, now, as you're doing all these things to regenerate yourself, time out with God is very important. Right? Now, for some of us, for me personally, how I regenerate myself is I listen to some new worship songs and then I try to learn it on the keyboard or the guitar. And so then I feel refreshed. Right? That's me. Right? Uh, well, some of them, you know, learning an instrument, it's, it's a pain. Right? So if you feel that it's you know, stressing you out, you don't have to do that. Right? So find out what regenerates you. Uh, you know, there's there's a young man in our church and he says, Pastor, after a long day of hard work, what I like to do is I like to come back, change and go to the gym. For me, it was like, okay, you had a hard day's work. You know, why don't you just, you know, rest on your bed? But no, he, he feels regenerated, right? Physically, when, when he goes and he goes and he exercises in the gym, he feels regenerated. Now, that's not my cup of tea. I like to come back and listen to music, play the guitar, and just relax. That's regenerating for me, right? Uh, but whatever it is, whatever, uh, uh, you know, you do to regenerate yourself, Time out with God is so important. Resting in God. Let's tell God, God, you are the center. You are the core. The reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because of you. Right? Uh, yes, we do things, right? We can go to the gym. We can cycle. We can play music. It can regenerate us. But the core of all of this must be God. God, even as I'm doing this to regenerate myself, uh, it is you, it is your presence that can help me. You are the center that holds everything to me. And then we listen to God, we pray, we read his word, we examine, we reflect upon our lives, reflect on how God has you know, been so good to us and the seasons that he has taken us through. And then we evaluate our lives. So regenerate yourself, very important. Right. Take time off. You know, sometimes it is you know, just going out with your family um, out to the park to be so regenerating. Right. There are many times I just paused at work and I said, okay, it's getting too much. You know, sometimes we, there's a lot of material and everything is going in. And uh, you know, we are trying to prepare and plan material for the church and things ahead, what needs to be done. And you know, sometimes it gets tiring. So many times I've paused and I said, okay, let's just go out. Luckily, we in Mangalore, they, we, in the city that we stay, stay in, we have beaches. So he would go and just, you know, sit on the beach, relax. Uh, so find what regenerates yourself. Your strength will come. Isaiah 30, 15, your strength will come from settling down in complete dependence on me. That is where our strength is from. Right? Our, our natural abilities are our strengths, but our real strength is settling down in what God has done for us. Right? Next point, stop demonic disruptions and delays. John 10.10 10 is a common verse. It says, a thief is only there to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so they can have real internal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. Right now, it's not that every time there are distractions, uh, you know, a traffic jam is not an evil spirit, right? Power failure is not an evil spirit. Or if the Xerox machine is not working or the computer crashes, it's not always, you know, the enemy or the devil that is trying to stop us from, you know, working. No, all these are natural things. But remember that the enemy can use these tactics to steal away our resources. Right, our time, our money, our energy. Let me give you this example. It was last semester, uh, and my laptop, you know, it gave gave me a problem. It said it needed to be uh, updated or something. So it was just not switching on. So I went, I gave it to the service station, and they repaired it, and they gave it to me in the next day. But that was a season when there was a lot of work to be done. 
right? So that one day also mattered. But I said, okay, God, this one day somehow I will, you know, uh, I will compensate for the work that I missed out on that day. And so I got the laptop back, back, and then I, you know, I knew, okay, there's a lot of work ahead. Next month is going to be a hectic month, uh, preparing material, preparing courses, preparing content for for Bible college, for the ministry, for the church. Uh, uh, preparing sermons, preparing, uh, you know, Bible study material for our Wednesday Bible study, Friday uh, prayers. We had to prepare a lot of material. So I knew that there was a lot of work. Two days after using the laptop, the laptop crashed again. It was just not switching on. And I said, this is something that is not common. I mean, uh, I just gave it for an update. I just gave it for a repair. Uh, and I started getting really, you know, stressed. I said, well, why is this happening to my laptop? What do I do? Uh, I can't just keep going and giving it to the service station and then they'll say, come tomorrow, come the next day. Uh, and, and I really got, you know, I was getting frustrated uh, because there's this work to be done. I remember just sitting and the Holy Spirit just reminding me and saying, calm down. You know, calm down. Just, just stay calm. Uh, and, and so I, I, I remember saying, uh, you know, in my own way, I said, the whole, I said to the Holy Spirit, how can I stay calm if I don't get my work done? Uh, and these are tasks that have to be done. And, you know, I can't leave them pending like this. And this laptop is acting so funny. Uh, but I remember the Holy Spirit saying, just pray. Right? You don't have to do anything. Just pray. So uh, I, I told my wife to, you know, let's just pray. Right? And I prayed. I just prayed. I said, God. Make this laptop work again because you know I have a lot of tasks and I command every distraction that the enemy is trying to bring. I command it to be gone, uh, and I just shut and I just closed the laptop. And after about fifteen minutes, I switched on the laptop and it just came on. Right, what I tried for about two hours, it just did not come on. Uh, but. I switched it on and it came on. Now there will. Now I'm not saying we, this. We can do this every time, uh, but what I'm trying to say is, there will be these kinds of ways where the enemy can bring distraction. These are tactics that he can use, right? Stay alert. If you sense it's a demonic hand. Now the reason I felt it was something demonic was because just two days back I gave it for a service and a Google update, so it should be working fine. But then two days later, if this happens, I knew that. Yeah, something is not right. Uh, but then it began to work again and I was able to do my tasks, my work that was assigned to me. Right. So in seasons like that, stay bold, stay strong, tell the storms, be seized because you intend to reach your destination. Uh, now, this is just a practical way, practical thing, but the enemy can come in different ways. Right. Uh, he can come, uh, you know, stealing our time taking away our time, our energy. You know, sometimes we wake up and we feel so tired and groggy. Be like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything. Uh, you can just speak over yourself. Say, okay, God, I know that there's, I'm feeling this way, but your word says you will give me strength to rise up like wings, like eagles. Give me the strength physically, mentally to do the tasks that have been assigned to me. So, right? so we, can, we can always rebuke the works of the enemy. Next point is to plan ahead. Ecclesiastes 3.1, it's a wonderful verse. It says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Uh, you know, when you plan, uh, when you're deciding ahead of time, when, where, and how your resources are going to be used. Right? Mark out slots in your calendar. You know, have a calendar for yourself. Look at your calendar and plan out, right? Whether it's ministry, whether it's work, whether it's family, plan out. Uh, because planning is, is is very important, very, very important. And if you read the book of Numbers and you see the way God orchestrated his work, the way he told the people of Israel, you know, even to the, to the point of where uh, you know, where each tribe should walk, what flag they should carry, how the flag should, what the flag should look like. Or even if you look at the old uh, tabernacle and what uh, the things that Jesus, sorry, the things that God told uh, Moses and uh, the people of Israel, 
It is so well planned out. God is a God of plan, planning, right? Uh, my, my teacher used to say this. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I can just mention this again. Failing to plan is planning to fail, right? Failing to plan is planning to fail. If we don't plan, that means we're planning to fail ahead. Right? Uh, we can develop a daily plan. We can develop a weekly plan, a monthly plan, a quarterly plan, an annual plan. Whatever it is, have a plan. Then you can, uh, you know, have plans of two years, three year plans, five year plans. Currently, I'm working on a five year plan. And okay, uh, in 2027, I actually started off in 2021. Uh, so uh, 2026 is when that, you know, I've written, I've put down some things that I want to, you know, achieve and I want to see myself in 2026. Um, and so I put that down and I, I look to achieving those plans, right? Of course, there will be times when God can bring divine inter interventions and divine changes, be open to that. But I look to, okay, personally, I want to see myself here as, as a family. I want to see myself here in 2026. Now, some of us, I think 2026, you know, we got so many years still. Why don't you just plan yearly? Yes, um, I have a yearly plan too. Uh, but I like to keep those plans as well. So when I have the short plans, I have those longer plans. But plan ahead uh, and be able to accommodate changes. Now, when you look at ministry as well, it is very, very important to plan ahead. When we look ahead and say, okay, God, uh, this is what I want to see the church. This is what I want to see. Or if, you, if it's a business, this is what I want to see the business ahead uh, in the next two years, three years. Uh, and... When we do that, God begins to work with us. God sees our hard work and he blesses the hard work that we do. Right? Uh, uh, you know, the Bible teaches us that uh, the, the hands that work hard are a blessing to the Lord. Right? God will bless our hard work uh, when we work hard. Right? He will definitely bless it. Uh, and the Bible says that when the Lord blesses, he will add no sorrow to it. That's so wonderful, right? Uh, when God blesses, he will add no sorrow to it. Uh, will there be seasons of challenges? Yes. But whatever we have, we will be grateful. We'll say, God, I want to thank you. We're not going to look at others and say, oh, look at them. They have a house. They have this thing. They have two cars. They have five houses. They have, you know, they go for family outing. They go to this place. You'll not compare your life to others because... When God blesses you, he will bless you in such a way that you will be content. You will have no sorrow in that blessings. So that's wonderful, right? Uh, next point, take a uh, family-friendly approach to business. Now, this is mainly for entrepreneurs, right? Uh, uh, providing needs or basic needs for your employees and all of it. If you are... Uh, even in the ministry, if you're if you're a pioneer in the ministry, you have your own ministry or your own business. There will be times that you will have to understand that people who are working with you are also family, right? So provide for facilities. You know, if not in the beginning, but as your ministry grows or as your business grows, provide for them, right? So be, small things like you know maternity leave, travel policies, flexible work timings, uh, you know. Uh, company-sponsored events. These are small things, but it adds a lot of value to uh, the business and to the ministry uh, that we are working at. Right. So any questions? We complete this chapter. Any questions about work-life balance? Any of you want to share your thoughts? Any questions on work-life balance? Any questions? Any, any thoughts? Any of you would like to share anything? How has it been for maybe uh, those who are in ministry and family, you know, managing that? Has it, how have we been managing, you know, both of them? You know, sometimes it gets really hard. Uh, anybody would like to share?
Yes, Taisha, please go ahead. Hi, Pastor. Hi, everyone. Well, for me, I work full time and I also do ministry. And uh, as I said before, when I started, it's more rocky <laughs> to get the foot in the door to try to find balance with family and um, ministry and job. Sometimes it's overwhelming. And honestly, when I get over, it's as if I want to stop. And at times I do stop and say, I'm not doing anything right now. And the Lord has the pretty much as if you want to, I don't need the covers. So the Lord has to remind me, it's not my anointing, it's his. So I have to keep going. But it's especially if you feel like as if you don't have any support, you have to do everything yourself. But it's about managing your time, managing everything. It's balance. And you learn that as you go. And I learned that uh, as I, I'm still learning it. I, I have a master it as yet. I'm still learning it, you know. So that that's so it's a work in progress for me. So I'm still at it. But I I am saying I am doing much better um, than when I started. So I just keep going and improving day by day. Thank you so much, Tasia. Uh, may God bless your ministry. And we heard a lot about your ministry. And uh, uh, it does get tough uh, balancing ministry, especially if you're pioneering something. It's really tough to, uh, you know, balance both the ministry and the family. But the Lord will give us the strength. The Lord will give us wisdom. Uh, so that's great. Thank you for sharing. Uh, anybody else want to share your thoughts? you have any questions? Okay. All right. So uh, we have another 10 minutes. Let's pick up from... Uh, Taisha, uh, you raised your hand again. Uh, yes. Like it just dropped, yes. It just dropped in my spirit. What about those that are thinking about going into ministry? Maybe you could shed some light and wondering, is there a right time to start? Do I have to quit my job to start? Do I, they're just seeing that they're bouncing off walls, don't know to quite get it together. Maybe you could give some encouragement to you know, yes. you know, just start, you know, and see God. Maybe you could share some light on that. Sure, sure. Yes. So, uh, um, especially for those in the workplace and, you know, we, 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 we've been working for many years and then we feel, okay, uh, God is calling us to start our own ministry. Now it's very, very important. There are certain points. I'll probably give you two or three points. But here are some things that we must be very, very, uh, you know, careful and we must use the wisdom that God has given us. One, uh, you know that this, the, the thought of starting your own ministry is from God. You know that God has called you to do it and you have this assurance within you. You know the Holy Spirit has put that in your heart uh, and you know that this whole thing is from God, right? Then you be assured that, okay, God is going to help you, right? Because many a times, uh, you know, many people think, okay, ministry is something, okay, we can just do whatever we want, however we want. So get out of this workplace thing. I don't want to sit in the, uh, you know, in, in the office. So I, I want to go meet people. I want to have my own time. I want to have lunch when I want to, you know, I want to go. So people join ministry, not only for good, you know, there are wrong reasons for people to join ministry. Right. Or sometimes people want to be evangelists just because they can travel all across. Uh, you know, people will invite them. They can travel uh, and they're not, you know, they like to travel. So they, that's why they want to become evangelists. Now, these are wrong motivations or wrong reasons to join the ministry. So when we know that God is telling us, it is God who has put it in us. Number one thing is we must be assured that it is God putting it in our hearts. Two, when we know it's God, the important thing is to take time take time and think about what needs to be done right so that's where the point of planning comes into place right yes because god has called me doesn't mean you know i quit my job hey god has told me join me i quit my job uh and then i go and i start ministry and then you know that you have a wife you have two children the children have to uh, have to go through school there are school fees there are they need to put food on the table and then there's nothing. 
and then we can sit and pray and say god uh, you said you uh, you know uh, i rebuke this enemy and that enemy now that would be the wrong way of doing things right so always plan ahead if god has put it in our heart what we can do is say okay one year from now or two years from now i'll prepare myself right financially right okay i know that these are the things i need to do and and so i prepare myself i, I say okay before i launch out so during these two years I'll, I'll i'll save up some money right uh because i need money to you know open the trust i need money to hire or rent a place i need money to buy equipment for the church uh, or could be just uh, chairs and a stage or you know musical instruments i can't just randomly start something right so i need to plan out now uh, one of the things that you know you know uh, i personally did was when i knew that okay i'm going to join uh, i wanted to join bible college uh, now i was working in the it company but i wanted to join i knew that it was god uh, but i had to give it some time so remember it was about 8 months odd uh, eight to almost a year you know but what i did was i as much as i could i saved up saved up some money you know because i knew that if i'm joining bible college uh, first day i need to pay the fees too i need to you know be able to you know at least help myself for these one or two years right and then after that i can go ahead and get a job or see what god has called me but but i knew that i if i had to get into ministry there were you know bible college i had to have some kind of planning ahead right so um, so two is plan ahead because there, you know I, i remember meeting this young man a young pastor he stays in a different uh, city of our nation god called him uh, he had definitely a calling of god upon his life god called him to be a pastor but the mistake he made was he was doing an uh, he was an electronic engineer uh, so he's, he was earning enough to look after his family he had a small child the mistake he made was immediately he put his papers down and he said god has called me and he was really excited he was praying he was sitting at home and praying and he would go reach out to people he realized at one point he didn't have money to put petrol in his bike and then he didn't have money like he looked out for places to start the church but he didn't have money to make the rental agreement so what happened he began to ask people can you help me to do this because i want to uh you know start the church and then that went on can you give me some money i want to buy speakers can you give me money i want to buy the instruments i want to buy this i want to buy that and what happened was he started the church but by the time he started church he was in a debt of about 3 to 4 lakhs and few months into the church the people came and said where's my money it's been so long that you haven't given my money back now some of them were believers he said no we need the money you took it from us saying you'll give it to me in six, two months or one month and all of that i didn't get it back so the way the ministry started itself there was too much of hurt it's too much of chaos and then the church people were asking what happened why why are these people behind you no i had borrowed money from them oh this pastor borrows money from everyone oh, i hope he doesn't so the whole church right probably there were about 30 40 people it was kind of this the feeling in the church was like okay pastor is going to ask us for money pastor is going to and because of that without him realizing most of his sermons were about money you know when he gave to god god and then they came and stopped thankfully god ministered the holy spirit ministered to him and he realized his mistake but when he realized his mistake it, he was already too far in right uh, but thank god you know god somehow restored him and he's back in his on his feet uh but he always tells me you know everyone who starts ministry i tell them don't be in a hurry now god will when 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 you know that god is calling you prepare yourself financially uh materially uh, yes there will be these one off times with god says okay go right now i'm going to make supernaturally god is going to provide that's wonderful right uh but if god made moses wait god made the apostle paul wait god made david wait 
and that waiting time we studied about it right that waiting time was not wasted time it was it was preparation time right so uh, firstly know that what god has called us for it is from god god is telling you to do this and two uh, plan and prepare well right so i, I think this will really help us to set, set the stage right right uh, and we we know that okay we're starting the ministry in the right way uh and three i would also like to bring this uh don't always look for big opportunities this is a lesson that i learned it and i'm thankful for that god opens doors in small ways the bible teaches us never despise meager beginnings right you start off in the ministry don't always look for okay that big stage the big you know the big sound system many people that may be there burning in our heart that is good but be ready to serve even when there are five six people right we 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 must be not we must not be in a place by saying okay you know i'm a senior manager in this company now i've left that and come here and i can't minister to these five people right now that would be pride firstly and and that that's not the right way to deal with things when god gives he gives us usually it's meager beginnings every ministry i think in this world would have started off with two or three people right and now they've grown up so businesses have started off small right if you even if you look at the biggest businesses globally right now I was reading about uh, forget that business uh, forget that uh, the chinese man i forget his name uh but i was reading about this business and uh and the way he started off and and he started off in a small rented in a house he rented a room in the house not in the whole house because he didn't have money and now he's a multi million dollar uh he's got a multi million dollar business so everything starts small so don't be afraid to start small right uh, it could be ministering to two people missing you may be put in charge of the life group which has 10 people you know to say oh these 10 people i want to preach in the church in front of 50 or 100 or 1000 people no god always gives us starts off with small beginnings and we don't despise it jesus himself taught us those who are faithful and small much will be given to them right so uh, so these three points know that it's from god to uh, plan ahead three don't be afraid for small beginnings i think when we stand on these uh, principles god will definitely establish our feet right uh, all right so we've come to the end of our class uh, we'll pick up from next week with chapter 20 uh, we may be doing next week may be the last uh, two classes and then we can bring this course to a close so All right so uh, let's close in prayer uh, maybe any one of us can close kennedy can you close in prayer for us yes i will yes yes let's thank pray. you i have any father thank you for the good time that we had with our lecturer regarding your word regarding our teaching on how we should plan how we should execute our, our duty you know that using king, kingdom standards jehovah i commit everything into thy hands it's my prayer and it's my desire that whatever we plan the whole we are going to put it into practice for your honor and glory amen 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 thank you kennedy thank you everyone for joining have a wonderful week ahead i'll see you next week god bless bye now